Hi there. This is the second portion of the onboarding process. In this video, we will go over how to configure, add, and change content on your page, better known as the design process. First, let's go over how to add content to your page with rows. As you can see in the row selection ribbon, there are multiple ways to add columns and configure them for desktop, mobile, and tablet views. Rows are the lowest layer on your site and act as containers for nested rows, tiles, and everything else. We recommend only putting nested rows within the rows, with the exception for hero images as backgrounds. Nested rows are containers for the content on your site. You can manipulate the padding and pixels, width, and the number of columns a nested row contains. Clicking into the configuration cog of a nested row, a dialog box appears. It has three tabs of options for customization. In the general tab, we have a background image with an image, a color slider, a background image path, a background image style, the ability to limit the max row width of the nested row in pixels, and visibility, which can allow you to decide whether or not a piece of content should appear on a certain device. The next tab is padding. This tab relates to two different types of padding on the page. Row padding is about the space between rows on the page, and then column padding adds padding to the content within the columns. Finally, the advanced tab, where you can inject custom CSS classes that relate to design. You can decide configuration of the, top, of the row with this option right here. You can click through one, two, three, four or six column rows and configure them for mobile and tablet views. Moving on to our tile tab, we have a bunch of different options to choose from right here. This is the all part where you can see all the tiles or you can click into these tabs right here and see them organized in different categories. First, let's click save tiles. Save Tiles reminds us of the Design Homepage and under the Manage tab. This is where you'll be able to find the user tiles created ahead of time for easy drag and drop ability onto your page. This is a great option for companies that have custom configured tiles. Now, for a brief explanation of the different sections and highlighting some of our most used tiles. Accessories, the text tile. The text tile is very useful. Typically, it can be used for buttons on a page to take the end user to third-party sites or embed text on the page itself. Power BI. Power BI surface reports and other important information created in the Office 365 app. Custom tile. This tile responds directly to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You can use the developer dashboard to make and see changes to the tile. Cloud documents tile. This is where you can hook up these integrations and manage all of your documents through live tiles. You can upload, edit, and delete files from Dropbox, Google Drive, and OneDrive. This also refers to the Manage tab on the Design homepage. The Documents tile. This is where you can connect custom libraries and lists from SharePoint through our Asset Picker. Feeds. This is our News tile. Easily configurable and can be filled with content like corporate news and announcements. This also pulls information from a custom list or announcement list. Links. Navigation. Global and local navigation can be helpful when creating a site. It would be worthwhile ahead of time to create a global navigation within SharePoint site settings. But once that is created, it is easy enough to hook up through the custom drop-down menu. Or create your own option through custom.
rectangle tile. This is a great tile to use for buttons, which you can add an image, which acts as an icon, and then link, and choose how the target link will respond when the end user clicks. Calendar tile. This is where you can create a custom SharePoint calendar that can be surfaced on and shown on this tile. Once again, you need to choose the path of the calendar that you've created in SharePoint. Media, image and video. You can embed images and videos into your site with this tile. All you need to go through is find the proper path for the item itself. So in the image tile, you click on the image dropdown, click or find the asset within your SharePoint library or paste a URL in this list path right here. Similarly, with the video tile, you can paste the video path but we recommend that it's either an internal video uploaded through Microsoft Stream or a public YouTube or Vimeo video. We do not break privacy settings. And social. This is your social hub for your organization. You have access to Facebook, Twitter, and Yammer. Finally, let's go over page settings. Page settings is where you can see a higher level version of your page, its title, provide a background color for the entire page, a background image, a font family, page width, and padding. Also, under custom code, this is where you reference the CSS classes that were provided in the rows or the tiles under the advanced tab. Saving. You have three options of saving. You have save as a page, which will save it with a page title, a file name, and then a location. We always recommend users save their pages in their site pages of the site collection that LiveTiles is installed on. Saving as a template will also save this page to your design homepage for other users to click into it and edit and create their own designs with your corporate branding. And then save as an export which will download this page as a TGZ file bundle, and you'll be able to upload it and import it through the design homepage. You have preview with, which you can see the configuration that you've created for different devices. Quick view, if you don't want to save and go to page, this is a rough draft version. Finally, undo, redo, and any sort of help guides that you need. Thank you so much for watching these videos. We hope you enjoy your design and building experience using LiveTiles.